Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is John Averos, host of Hot Take Hockey. Mitch Marner, always been a conversation on this channel, positive, negative, overall from the team. I think when you're looking at Mitch Marner, drafted fourth overall in the 2015 NHL entry draft, hometown boy, you've always wanted to see him succeed in Toronto. I've wanted to see him succeed in Toronto. And I think when you're looking at Marner specifically, he was one of my favorite players to watch in the early parts of his career. But of course, when money gets involved, when frustrations get involved, playoff disappointments, failed promises, failed expectations. You, you can just go on so much wording here. But Mitch Marner has gone from the highest of highs to the lowest of lows in this market. And I do think it needs to be reiterated how skilled this player is, how good this player is, and how good he can be. So... This video is talking about how Mitch Marner is going to prove all of us wrong and just absolutely explode this year. There's a few reasons why, but mostly just because people are expecting him to fail. And at this point, I think his expectations have, it probably internally risen. Like he wants more for himself, but at the same time, people are not expecting things to happen here. And I think that's going to just proved to be wrong like I think Mitch Marner is going to have a massive year debate all you want if that's going to be regular season or playoffs it almost makes you think that what happened with Nylander last year maybe becomes different for Marner this year right like Nylander exploded last year in the regular season then you sign the contract extension mid-season Nylander falls off a little bit there in that regular season of course he still ends up playing big in the playoffs scoring a couple big goals in the first round like here's the thing it doesn't really matter anymore if you can't get past the first round, right? Like, they did get past the first round, went to the second round, lost to the Panthers last year, lose to the first round, Boston Bruins again. So, it doesn't really matter. But at the same time, Mitch Marner, do you avoid signing that mid-season contract because you want to see that go the whole season into the playoffs? Well, let me pull it up because last time Mitch Marner was proving himself in the playoffs or in the season... That was on his entry-level deal. And specifically in that regular season, we'll pull it up right here, Mitch Marner went off. I personally go through struggles on a day-to-day -day basis. You guys see me on YouTube. You see me hosting. You see me doing things in front of large groups of people. That still can bring a lot of anxiety. Well, anxiety is a common experience. It doesn't have to hold you back from reaching your full potential. That's where BetterHelp comes in, the paid partner of this video. BetterHelp connects you with a credentialed therapist who is trained to listen and give you helpful and unbiased advice. First, you go to their site, answer a few questions, and BetterHelp will match you to a professional who has years of experience helping people with struggles just like yours. You can do it all from your phone or computer via phone call, video chat, or messaging. However you feel most comfortable, it's the easiest possible way to start talking to a therapist. Let BetterHelp connect you to a therapist who can support you all from the comfort of your own home. Visit betterhelp.com slash hot take hockey or choose hot take hockey during sign up and enjoy a special discount on your first month. As you can see here, Mitch Marner in the 2018, 2019 season prior to his big contract 94 points in 82 games. That was a huge spike from the 60-90 he had the year previous. And overall, just plus minus. And even when the expectations were down. You know what? That year in the playoffs, not great. Four points in seven games, but still acceptable. Looking previous to the Capital Series where he had... Sorry, this was the first Boston Bruins Series. Nine points in seven games. Also had a good first series against the Capitals, four points in six games, but he was active in those series. You could tell Mitch Marner wanted it back on his entry-level deal, back when money wasn't a factor as much as it is obviously now. So you do go back to the 2022-2023 playoff run. Mitch Marner put up assists. He definitely put up the numbers. He had 14 points in 11 games. I think when you look at Marner in that series against the Tampa Bay Lightning in that first series, he had a lot of great moments. And then it obviously fell off against the Florida Panthers a little bit. So I think the perspective here for Marner is 57 playoff games, 11 goals. I think fans want to see more from him. There was back-to-back -back playoff series after signing that big contract. So you sign the huge contract. You have 94 points in 82 games, sign the big contract, have a decent playoff appearance. And then your next two playoff runs, specifically against the Montreal Canadiens, and the Columbus Blue Jackets. I said it backwards there. Blue Jackets first, Canadians second. You have zero goals through uh, through 
12 playoff games. That's an issue for a lot of fans. That's an issue for the market. I think right now, on a contract year where he has to prove himself again, you're surely expecting a bump from only one goal in seven games in last year's playoff series against the Boston Bruins. And specifically, you're probably expecting a playoff performance like he did have in 2023 and not falling off. So, do I expect Mitch Marner to be a 100-point player this season? Yes, I'm expecting Mitch Marner to have his first 100-point season in his career, and I'm expecting him to go off in the playoffs. It just it has to happen. And this is where I think the debate is, do you hold on? Do you, and how do I think about this? Do you just stand pat and let the player play? Let the player not get distracted by any contracts. Let the player play. And I think that might be the perspective here. Maybe you don't sign a mid-season. Maybe you go, Mitch, we want you to be a Toronto Maple Leaf. We want you to be a Toronto Maple Leaf forever. But we'll sign that contract after we win the Stanley Cup. That's what needs to be said. That That's what needs to be talked about. I think that would be an amazing perspective, an amaz- amazing approach on this situation. Mitch, play out the year. Verbal agreement, we're signing you. You're signing here. But go win a Stanley Cup and then we're going to pay you even more than you're expecting. Like that should be the perspective and I think a lot of fans want that perspective and want that approach. So when you're talking about Mitch Marner past that, I think it's just going based on what we saw in the offseason and that's the Leafs exploring what they could do with this player. And if you specifically look at the Star Local Media talking about uh, the appearance on TSN with Pierre Lebrun talking about teams reaching out to the Leafs, reaching out on Marner's availability, and you just see the plan for Marner and his camp was for him to get to camp, start the season, and then see how things go from Lebrun. That might eventually lead to a contract extension at some point in time, or it may just be, let's play the season out and see what happens. That's what I'm getting at. But do you, like I said, Ignore what happened last year with Nylander and just let him play out the year. If both sides want to be together, if Mitch Marner wants to be a Toronto Maple Leaf for his career, Toronto boy, wants to stay close to his family, wants to stay close to everyone he loves and everyone he cares about, he will be a Toronto Maple Leaf. The Leafs value Mitch Marner on this team, he will be a Toronto Maple Leaf. So why not just play the season out if both sides agree that he will be a Toronto Maple Leaf? So... As LeBron says, all those things are on the table and they always have been and that doesn't mean that teams didn't call this summer. While Marner's camp has maintained control over the situation thanks to the forwards no movement clause, including the current contract, LeBron revealed that the Leafs in fact received calls from teams curious about the winger's availability. However, as Le- LeBron clarified, at the end of the day, Mitch Marner has always had control 100% of this situation. So again, what I'm talking about here, Marner entering his final season of the six-year $65.4 million contract, carrying a hefty $10.9 million cap hit, Do you just let it play out? If both sides want to figure it out, they'll figure it out in June after hoisting the Stanley Cup. You can call that delirious. You can call that delusional. You can call that so many different words. At the end of the day, the incentive to do everything possible to earn that contract goes on top of just the general will and want to win. Marner, I'm sure, he wants to win. Mitch Marner wants to win. But the perspective is, there is extra juice going if you're playing for a contract. And I think that's the perspective where Mitch Marner is going to prove us wrong this year. So guys, let us know in the chat. Let us know in the comments what you think. Will Mitch Marner prove us wrong? Is it a section of the season before a contract extension? Or is it for the full season going into the playoffs where he goes on, I mean, I'm joking around here, but a Troy Brower type run before the contract year. That's a huge perspective, guys. If you go into the playoffs, especially too, maybe Mitch Marner will feel uncertainty, but if there's a verbal understanding that both sides will stay together, it's just a matter of how much more money can he earn on top of that agreement. So if he's going to stay for 11.5, $12 million per year, that's a lot of money. Like I can't imagine Mitch Marner having an issue with $12 million per year eight years but if you go out and have a deep playoff run three rounds point per game player in the playoffs then four rounds maybe even win a stanley cup like if mitch marner can go on a run like that and do the point production point per game that he had 
in those two rounds against the Lightning and Panthers and actually be consistent throughout that run, he's going to be right there with Austin Matthews per year. Right in the 13s per year. Million, million and a half per year more over an eight-year term. I mean, that's that, that's a good incentive. Marner, get another $8 million in your pocket after you go on a deep run. So thank you so much, guys, for watching. Subscribe, like, comment, always. Notification bell on. We'll see you on the next video and for the season. Peace.